So we all know when it comes to MacBooks, you've got different power options. It's a device that runs on battery power. So it makes perfect sense to have low power mode, automatic mode, high power mode, depending on what situation you're in. If you want to extend the battery life, you'll go low power mode. If you don't really care that much and you just want the maximum power, you will choose high power mode. That's all well and fine. The question is, why did Apple give us them options on the M4 Pro Mac Mini, a device that's constantly plugged in? and they didn't add it to the base model M4 Mac Mini. Well, I've done some tests, and I've done Cinebench, Geekbench, I've done gaming, and video exports in all three modes, so that's low power, automatic mode, and high power mode, to see if it makes any difference switching between the modes on the M4 Pro Mac Mini, and what's the point of it? So, if it's your first time here, my name's Almir, aka Mr. HTech. Do remember to subscribe to the channel below for more content like this. Like the video if you do like it, and share it with your friends and family who might be interested with this type of content. But let's go and find out what do all these modes mean on the M4 Pro Mac Mini. So even though I'm personally not a fan of these benchmarking apps and I don't think they provide a real world example of the differences, a lot of you out there are. So first we're gonna go through Cinebench, go through the different modes and see the different scores that have come out. So in Cinebench, low power mode we've got a gpu score of 6000 a cpu single core score of 154 and a cpu multi-core score of 840. in automatic mode we've got a gpu score of 7730 a cpu single core score of 172 and a cpu multi-core score of 1422 and in high power mode we've got a gpu score of 7717 a CPU single core score of 174 and a CPU multi-core score of 1,451. Moving over to the Geekbench scores, in low power mode we get a GPU score of 51,732, CPU single core score of 3,291, a CPU multi-core score of 13,934. In automatic mode we have a GPU score of 60,681, a CPU single core score of 3,812, and a CPU multi core score of 20,314. And in high power mode, we have a GPU score of 60,586, CPU single core score of 3,809, and a CPU multi core score of 20,607. So, after the benchmarking result, something I wanted to see was how do these different power modes affect the frame rates in games when you're actually gaming with the M4 Pro Mac Mini. The game I selected was Path of Exile and I put it in a resolution of 2560 by 1440. Now in both modes I switch between everything on low settings and then everything on high ultra settings. So let's see the results for that. So for Path of Exile in low power mode everything in low settings frame rates were fluctuating between 50 and 70 depending on where you are. Obviously when you get in higher mob areas it does take more graphics power, so then the frame rates do drop. Everything in high and ultra settings was between 30 and 40 frames per second. When putting it in automatic mode and all the settings on low, we saw frame rates between 80 and 120. And when putting everything on high and ultra, we saw frame rates between 65 to 100. Then we went over to high power mode. Everything on low settings, frame rates were between 80 to 120, same as in automatic. And then everything in high and ultra, it was between 65 to 105. And then after the gaming, I went to see how these different power modes affected the actual exporting of videos in Final Cut. I had two videos which I've previously recorded about the Mac Mini, and I put them in different power modes and exported the video, timed it how fast it was, and these are the results. So the first video was the using an iPad as a display video, which was five minutes and 34 seconds long. Now in low power mode, the export time took 2 minutes and 57 seconds. In automatic mode, it took 2 minutes and 40 seconds. And in high power mode, it took 2 minutes and 39 seconds. The next video I selected was connecting multiple monitors to the M4 Mac Mini. That video had a total time of 8 minutes and 55 seconds. And when exporting in low power mode, it took 4 minutes and 28 seconds. In automatic mode, it took 4 minutes and 18 seconds, and in high power mode, it also took 4 minutes and 18 seconds. So with all the results now out of the way, 
I personally can't see a reason that you would benefit from putting the M4 Pro Mac Mini into low power mode. Like I mentioned, having a laptop and putting it into low power mode, you benefit from that extra battery life. But with a machine that's connected to power constantly, unless you've made some portability rig for it with a power bank or something where you want to save that power that it's using, I don't think you should be putting it into low power mode ever, essentially. Now the difference between automatic and high power mode was very negligible, especially in gaming and video exporting that I saw basically no difference in the benchmarks. Sometimes the results were even a little bit higher for automatic mode. So what I would suggest is don't fiddle about with the power settings, leave it on automatic, because Mac seems to know the best times when it needs all the power and when it doesn't need the power. So that should answer the question of, do these power modes mean anything for the M4 Pro Mac Mini? Do I need to touch them? No, you don't need to touch them. Leave it on automatic and benefit from both directions. Now, I hope you liked that video. Do remember to subscribe down below. Like the video if you did like it and share with your friends and family. Let me know in the comments if this video helped you and let me know of any other videos you want to see with the M4 Mac Mini. And I will catch you on the next one.